Hello and welcome to yet another video on Auto Workshop. This time just cleaning an axe I found. These is a, it's a woodworker's axe and it has a nice one-sided bevel. Right, it's meant to make precise cuts. Now I found this at a small flea market and I had to dig through several boxes to find it. But to my surprise, I found it, and the price was super cheap, so I brought it home with me. Cleaning it was just basic, some rust remover and some fine grit sandpaper, and as you can see, the, the surface rust just disappears. For fun, I checked what the price is, and I paid about a fifth of watch. what the going price is for this axe. It's from the Danish steel industry, back when they made axes. Uh, so it's actually significantly valuable, which is good, and it's also um, great quality steel and all in all a really good piece of work. I find it interesting that when you go to a flea market you will find these old tools that grandpa used to have, and most people have just thrown them away. This one was in a box with diff a bunch of different axes from DSI, which is Danish Steel Industries, and the guy at the, f uh, the flea market said, well, some guy had been at the dump and wanted to throw them all out, and he had seen the box they were in and he wanted the box, and then when he opened the box, all these axes were inside, so he took them as well. So he's basically just, well, for him, even though it's cheap, it's still profit, because, well, he got it for free, so he's selling it to me cheap, and he's making a profit. And after some initial cleaning, it's just already really nice. I went up to some higher grid and then just some gentle polishing. There is some pitting from the rust damage, which sadly will be there permanently. But then again, the places where the pitting is, is not near the cutting edge. So it's not an issue. The cutting edge, on the other hand, needed uh, some work because somebody had been using this axe for things that were not wood um, stupid people I know for an axe like this it'll last until my grandchildren or my great grandchildren if I have those it's just a, an amazing piece of work from back when you made tools that lasted it's also with, with the original handle, which has a nice curve to it. So when you're using it, and I have a video of me using it later, when you're actually using it, the whole shape is just perfect for making these carving cuts. This style of axe is from before you used uh, hand planes and such. Well, they always always used around the same time, but perfect for flattening surfaces just using is using a, an axe so here finally the video of me using my Tormic that I bought some time ago got it for, well, not for free but I got it cheap on a Facebook marketplace I always scurry scur around there looking for good deals and I got this old Tormic T3, and it's just nice. I've used it to sharpen my uh, woodworking gouges and chisels and axes and knives for the kitchens and knives for the knife for wood carving and so on. Right now, I'm just trying to find the the position where I want the the axe to sit when I start it up. It can take a little while to do. Now that I've found the position, I firm it up and we're ready to go. Just double check, try and practice the movement before I start it. It's my first time sharpening an axe on it, and it is a rather large axe head because it is a, a broad build axe, as we say. We start just a nice, nice AMSR. 
grinding sound of an axe going on a on a whetstone. And I just decided to remove the whole thing and do it by hand. It's much easier just to freehand it. Especially since it's only a one-sided bevel, it's it's much easier just to do it freehand. So the stone has two grids that you can activate using another stone on top of the stone. The first is 250 grid, and the second is 1000 grid. So you just run the stone on top of it, and it changes the grid. Now with the leather honing, the axe is almost ready. The, the dents that were there went away really quick, so lucky me that there weren't too deeply seated. And now we're just trying to get rid of the burr that we turned over on the other side. And then the axe is ready for use. And then just I smooth the back side of the axe. So here's a project I've been working on for a long time now. It's a bowl made of apricot tree. Back in December, I cut down a, a whole apricot tree that was over 50 years old. And I've been lacking an axe like this for a while. For it. And it just powers on through. And because it has this only one-sided bill, it, it's really good at making a straight cut that doesn't dig into the wood like a double-sided wood. So it makes a very nice, clean, straight cut, and it's easy to shape things with it. I look forward to using this a lot for shaping different items out of green wood instead of working with dried wood. So having tested the hex and being happy with the result, I move over then to make a simple sheath for it. I wanted a sheath that's just easy to make. <laughs> that's a priority for this. Uh, it didn't need to be something that would sit in your belt because this is not a traveling axe. It is a stationary tool that you take out when you need it. So I just needed something to cover the very sharp axe head because that is a, it's a bit dangerous just to have lying around and also to protect it so I don't have to constantly uh, resharpen the whole thing. So here's the whole process of me doing it. I'm not an expert by <laughs> any means in leather working but this is my simple process for making it. I mark it out just using my nail on the on the rough side of the leather and I just keep folding and folding and folding the leather until I found where I want to cut and then I cut it and I keep perfecting the shape until I get what I want. <laughs> now I found the, the rough shape I want and I just remove some material in the middle I bang it flat because that way it closes better and makes it easier for me to work with. Now I can see that the axe actually fits. That's good. Now the next part is just to close it up and also trim the sides so they are more straight than my free cutting makes it. I actually like to use a machinist um, square, which seems odd, but the machinist square fits perfectly for these thicker pieces, uh, pieces of leather I use. So it can just rest on the table with the leather at the same time, which is perfect. I just make some holes for the pins I want. Some through holes for pins. And after that, I'll sew it up and we'll have a nice simple sheet. Sewing in leather is 
always, in my opinion, quite calming because it is very relaxing and the sound of leather and the, the rough string is, is really nice. So here, these are some nice pins I found that you can use a screwdriver to set, which is nice. So I can remove them if I want to and replace them with something else. They're slightly more expensive, but they also... You don't need a press to put these in. They have a... They have a screw system that fits it instead. So now that I've put these in, I knock some holes for sewing. <laughs> just notice now that I actually just punch right into my cover. This is not a good idea. Um, shouldn't do that. Get my twine. These are coated twines. You use the coated twine because then you can burn it afterwards and I'll show that as well. And also just slides easier. So it's just a simple saddle stitch which means you have two needles and you go into the same hole and you go out you go into this the next hole with both needles and you go out in and out in and out and it's called the saddle stitch and at one point i'll make something that can actually hold it instead of me flopping around with it but when i make when i sew so little in leather these days then i have accepted the flopping around but it is on my project list to do To close it, when you have passed them through, you just make a little loop and go through the loop and you close it on the other end. I keep testing the axe just to make sure that it's not too tight, because if it's too tight, well, then we start over making <laughs> a new sheath instead. I had some issues with the needle going into the twine and, and messing it up. So I had to gently cut some of the twines, but they should still hold nicely. And after all this, it's a simple matter of burning the four pieces of twine sticking up, and they'll melt and fit nicely. So it's a little jiggly getting the axe in there, but when it's there, it, it doesn't flop off, which is the most important part. Here's just a holding view, and I recorded an extra video just to... <laughs> recorded an extra view just to show it off in the sheath, and also show the burning effect. So I hope you've enjoyed the video, and that you'll enjoy watching these and you'll come back and watch more. So have an amazing day.